Head to your watch settings today and you can download Watch OS 9. There's tons of new features and in this video, I'm gonna show you everything that's new, how you can use it, and some of the brand new features on the iPhone 2. Hey there, welcome to the video. So let's go through some of the brand new features in Watch OS 9. Now, if you're not seeing the update on your Apple Watch, you may need to update your iPhone to iOS 16 first before you see the ability to update your Apple Watch. But what's new in Watch OS 9? Well, let's start with workouts. So if you enjoy going for an evening run, you're gonna be really impressed with these new Apple Watch features. Let me show you. So there's some big improvements to the workout app. If you love a run, um, you can now see your workout heart rate zones. So you can see how far you're pushing yourself. Soon you're gonna be able to run against yourself, which is really cool. And it even measures things like your stride length as well. So just all the updates in watchOS 9 are gonna help you get fitter and faster. Now, I'm a terrible sleeper and I always have been, so I'm looking forward to trying the brand new sleep feature. Now, whilst the Apple Watch could track your sleep before in Watch OS 8, it really just told you if you were either in bed or not. It was really, really basic. Now, this has been really updated, so you can actually see more detailed information about your sleep. And you can see here, I've got my time asleep last night, which was seven hours, 46 minutes, and we have the sleep stages. This is what's new. So you can see it says I was fully awake for seven minutes. I was in REM sleep for two hours, 16, core sleep for four hours, 50 minutes, and deep sleep for only 40 minutes. So I didn't get a good night's sleep last night. And what it's gonna be able to do is actually track this over time. So as this has only been out for a few days, I only have a little bit of data here, but as you wear this on a nightly basis, you're gonna be able to track your sleep over time. And it's just really interesting to see this data and see the times when you woke up. If you want more details on this, you can actually go to the app on the iPhone and see this in a bit more detail. Next up is brand new watch faces, and this is something I look forward to every time there's a new release of Watch OS. So let's jump into the Apple Watch and I'll show you all of these brand new faces. So the first watch face, and probably my favorite, is the Metropolitan face, which lets you customize the dial and some other things, just like, of course, any other Apple Watch face. So if we go in and edit this, uh, you can see we've got the style here. You can kind of adjust the font and how many um, numbers are on the dial. I kind of like it like this. You've got the dial color, like so. You can adjust that between tons of different colors. You can go across and to all of these colors here. I mean, there's so many more colors than there used to be, which is really, really cool, but I personally like this storm blue color. And then we can adjust the complications here on the corner. But I just like this face. It's very, very modern looking, and I think I'm gonna be using this for some time. Next, we have the playtime face, which is a cool, playful little animation, which simply tells the time. The uh, fun thing you can do is actually poke the little characters here, and you can see they actually move as you touch them. So there isn't too much to this face, but it's just a nice, fun face if you want something different. So next up is the astronomy face, and this has been updated to give you an expansive display, um, and it actually even shows live cloud coverage. I don't know if you can see that there, as I go out, you can see live cloud coverage. And as you can see, as usual here in the UK, we're covered by gray cloud. Now, if you use your digital crown, you can even see where the sun's gonna be in the past or the future. So if I drag it forward six hours, we're gonna be in darkness here in the UK. And you can also check out when you're gonna get a sunrise. Pretty cool. Now, if we go to edit this, you can actually change the font and it sits behind the earth, which is pretty cool. You can see that there. You can change the view, so you can actually have the moon if you want to, or you can have the entire solar system. I like seeing the earth just because it actually tracks where you are within the earth, but let's have a look at the moon. You can see there we've got a really detailed image of the moon. And we can also go through the days and see when there's gonna be a full or crescent moon. Next up is the portrait face. Now this is quite cool. If you've taken any photos uh, in portrait mode, the Apple Watch can now use that separation between the subject and the background and actually place the clock between the two. So it adds for this really cool, nice effect. The best part about it too, is it can also detect cats and dogs. So you can have your pet on your Apple Watch. Now, one thing I haven't seen Apple really mention anywhere is you can now actually get all of the Nike Plus faces 
for your Apple Watch. And you can do this by scrolling right down to the bottom here. And uh, let's go to N, where are we, Nike. And you can see here, we've got these brand new Nike faces and quite a lot of them as well. So you could only get these faces before if you had purchased the Nike Plus Apple Watch. It seems that Apple has done away with that and these Nike Plus faces are available to all Apple Watch owners. So this just gives you a few more options for faces that you have that you may never have seen before. Now, if you like watch faces, you'll be pleased to know we have designed a ton of new Apple Watch wallpapers here at Buckle and & Band. And the best part about it is you can get these free if you're part of our Apple Watch Insider mail list. So I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna grab a load of packs of Apple Watch wallpapers. So easy to download, so check those out. Also, if you've seen some people on Instagram having like a Rolex face or a Casio face on the Apple Watch, and you've ever wondered how that's done, we uploaded a video last week about how you can use the Clockology app. So I'll put the link somewhere up here or in the description below so you can check that video out too. Now, if you enjoy a bit of hiking, you'll be pleased to see a brand new Compass app. Now, they kind of showed this off with the Apple Watch Ultra and it looked like it might be an Apple Watch ultra exclusive, but it's actually not. So they've updated the compass app here and it kind of looks a little bit similar how it did before at this stage where you've got a regular compass, but you've also got new options here. So we can tap this for more detailed view. We can see our incline, our elevation, latitude, and longitude. We can see where I parked the car. Uh, down here, you can actually set waypoints. So you can see we're in St. Anne's Square. We could add that, maybe add a campsite. You could do some walking, add another waypoint in and get directions to those waypoints using the compass. And then another new feature I really like is the start backtrack feature. So if you're walking through some woods or around a mountain, of course, you can't really use maps because you can't get directions to some trees. So what you can do is start backtrack, start this when you leave your campsite or your car, do your walk, and then if you get lost, you can use Backtrack to actually send you down the same route and use the compass to guide you to those locations. And you can see this little blue dot here, which is one of our waypoints. So all we need to do is walk towards that blue dot and the Apple Watch would get us back all in one piece. Now, if you take daily vitamins or you take medication, you're gonna to wanna to check out the brand new Medications app. This has been built from the ground up and it's just a great way to help you be reminded of the medications that you should take. So the Apple Watch will actually remind you to go take medications if you need to take them on a daily basis, a monthly basis, or even on an hourly basis. How good's that? Okay, so that's a couple of my favorite new features in Watch OS 9, but you also own an iPhone too, and it's just been updated to iOS 16. Now, when you update your iPhone, you'll notice that the, the iPhone doesn't really tell you what's new. So what I've done is I've collected all of my favorite brand new features that I think you will like in iOS 16. So let's jump into these. Okay, the first one is this pretty cool picture cutout feature. So let's just say you've got a picture of you or your friends or your pet and you want to maybe cut it out. Maybe you even want to do this for a business and you want to cut out an object. You can now do this as simple as this. Simply hold your finger on the photo and you'll see that the iPhone will instantly cut this out. You can now drag and drop this into an iMessage or you can airdrop it across to your Mac, PC or iPad and start editing it in Photoshop. So another new feature is the Measure app. Now this was here in the previous version of iOS, but I think it's actually been improved a little bit because I didn't know you could do this before. So with the Measure app, you can measure lines and distances using AR, but now it seems to have an advanced feature there. You can see that it's actually measuring the entire box. So if I click Add Rectangle, you can see there, it's given me the dimensions perfectly of the box. We can even move in forward and see it says 53 centimeters, 23 centimeters, and I can actually confirm that's actually correct. If we go even closer, it was giving me before, it's not doing it now, but it was giving me before even the centimeters being shown. So you can add that in, which is really cool. You can still, of course, add adjustments there. So we can add a line there, add that across there at the table. And you can see, you can still do it the old way of just actually measuring it using kind of waypoints. But it's really cool that you can actually go to a box and then instantly measure a box. I do this kind of on a weekly basis, so it's a good feature to have on your iPhone. 
Next up is the weather app. Now, of course, I live in England, so I'm checking the weather every single day because it could be super sunny or it could be raining, and I wanna know exactly when it's gonna rain. So now when you open up the weather app, it kind of looks like how it did before. So this is why I wanted to mention this because it's quite easy to miss. But what you can do is actually tap into any of the days and it will give you much, much more information. So you can see here that we've got kind of the cloud and rain cover, and we've got the high and low temperatures on the graph, we can tap this here and we've got all this extra data here as well. UV index, wind, precipitation, feels like humidity, visibility, and pressure. So let's go into the UV, the UV index. So if you're spending a day at the beach, you can see at what times are the times that you should maybe go and get lunch or maybe cover up. If we go to wind, you can see the windiest times of the day and even the direction of the wind. Rain, no rain here today, which is a bit of a, makes a bit of a difference. But you'll be able to see the amount of rainfall that you've got on any day. You can see here on Friday, we may have a little bit in the morning. Feels like, tells you what the temperature will feel like. So you know, sometimes if there's a bit of a chilly wind, it might say it's 18 degrees, but it could feel like 14 or 15. Humidity graph, especially handy if you're in more humid places like Florida. This could be a bit of a lifesaver. Visibility, if you live near the sea or in particularly foggy areas, could be quite handy if you're planning a journey. And the air pressure as well gives you a daily summary and gives you a little bit more details about what air pressure or pressure means. Also another feature that was here before is you can tap this little map icon here and actually watch the weather over a 12 hour forecast. Now you could do this before, but let's just zoom in here. Uh, we can see down the south coast here in Chichester, there's gonna be a little bit of cloud cover in the morning. You can see there's none at the moment, but as this flips back around, you can see how that changes. And again, you can change these to temperature, and get a map of, sort of the hottest parts of the country or the air quality as well. Pretty good here in the UK. So the next feature could be easily missed as well. And this is one for you if you use iMessage on your iPhone. You can now undo a message. And by undo, I mean you can stop it being sent, you can uh, undo the send and delete it like you can with WhatsApp, or you can go in and edit a message. This is super cool if you've got any typos in there or you send something you didn't mean to and you wanna take it back. We also have brand new lock screens. As you can see, we've got a brand new font here for the time and the clock, and we can add widgets for the first time. So you can see here, I've got the weather and my calendar events with no events today. But the best part about it is you can actually hold down and create some new faces. So I've got my wife there with the picture, and you can actually see it cuts out the time around her head there. I've got another one over there, one of the globe, and it's just really, really cool. It allows you to have different home screens for different parts of the day. Maybe you want one for work, maybe you want one for play, maybe you want one that is a bit more relaxed and doesn't tell you too much information. Maybe you want one like mine here, where when I'm at work, I actually want a little bit of detail about the weather or something that's coming up in my calendar. So it's cool to see that Apple, for the first time, have added widgets to the lock screen. And finally, we have an update to Apple Maps. You can now add in multiple stops in a journey. So before, if you were driving and you put in your home destination, let's say, there was no way to add in a middle destination. Maybe you wanna stop at the post office or the bank and you need directions there. You would have to add directions to the bank or post office first, drive there, and then set new uh, destination to get home. Now you can add this as one journey and add a stop or multiple stops in the middle. So check that out. And there we go, they are some of the top new features in watchOS 9 and iOS 16. Let me know in the comments section below, did you know about those features if you've already updated? And if you haven't updated yet, what features are you looking forward to trying? Thanks for watching and make sure to check out all of our Apple Watch videos up here or watch the one that's coming next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.